Hello, hello, how are you all today? So super excited to come and share with you a Bible study teaching on today. I'm so excited and I want to share revelation that the Lord gave me over the weekend as I was doing my Bible study. Good morning, who am I? I'm Pastor Garlinda Price with Common Ground Ministry right here in Fayetteville, North Carolina. My husband and I our outreach pastors, the Lord called us to share the word of God on social media. And we started out on Facebook doing Bible study every Tuesday. Then we moved to Thursdays. And then the Lord said, I want you all to move over to YouTube because you're going to reach a broader audience. I have greater things that I want to share with the nations and with the people of God. And so the Lord led me to begin sharing our Bible studies and the word of the Lord over here on YouTube. So excited to be here and to share with you. Um, encouragement and motivation and excitement someone left me a really nasty message um, I want to say it was the last message I shared um, that was a word from the Lord about repent the kingdom of heaven is at hand so I want to address it right shout out to my honey bunny pastor Marvin Price jr. aka lamb chop and I want to address the person's comment so I shared the prophetic word that God gave me mind you I don't call myself a prophet. I don't call myself anything other than a servant of the Most High God. Amen. He said we are all disciples. We should all desire to prophesy. I don't share anything that the Lord didn't tell me to say. I don't add anything to the word of the Lord. And I don't take anything away from the word of the Lord. And so the person said that I'm not the grantor of God wishes or the grantor of God gifts. And they said I hate you. Right? Which I thought was like that's so weird. Right? So I didn't take it personally that someone said they hated me. And I didn't take it personally that they had a difference of opinion. But what I want to um, address is I never said I was the giver of God wishes or the grantor of God wishes. I'm sharing the word of God. So the, therefore, the argument's not with me. Your argument is with the Lord. So take the argument to the Lord. Amen. And so I don't debate scripture. I don't debate what the Lord says. I don't argue against what the Lord says. And I seek the Lord and I used to not prophesy, right? So I knew that I had a, a, the, um, a gift of dreams, right? Dreaming to interpret the dreams and the visions that God gave me over time. I knew that I saw things in the spirit realm. I knew that I could see spiritual things in the natural realm. I knew that God had given me prophetic words and I wouldn't share it for the longest time, for years. Even after I was ordained as a pastor, licensed and ordained, I wouldn't tell people, right? And I remember having a vision one night and Marvin and I used to live in D.C. for about 14 years. D.C., Maryland, Virginia area. Loved it so much, right? After we had children, we came back to North Carolina where we're from. And I remember in the vision, I was sitting on some marble steps. And the steps were really long, like the steps you would go up a museum. Like if you were visiting the Natural History Museum or the Masonic uh, Museum in D.C. It was these long marble steps. So Marvin and I were sitting on the steps and these two angels approached. They were huge, so I knew they were angels. And the angel said, the angel of the Lord said, get up. And so I was still sitting there because I think I was stunned that they were angels. And he said, get up. And when he yelled, get up, it was like, stop sitting down on the gift that God has called you to. Stop sitting down on your ordination. Get out into the vineyard says the Lord thy God. And so I, got, I stood up quickly, honey, because he was not playing with me. right? And I got up and over time, the Lord began to teach me and instruct me. And so what happened was, I'm just sharing this for someone else that maybe will be attacked for the ministry, the gospel that they would share, the gospel of Jesus Christ, because you're not attacking me. So like I said, it didn't hurt my feelings. I don't think I've ever had anybody say, I hate you, but I don't expect everyone to like me either, right? I'm not that girl that says, oh, everybody loves me, everybody likes me, or I go and hide in the corner when people disagree. I'm just not that person. I have a pretty tough exterior. I always have. I'm the daughter of a Marine, so it doesn't phase me, right? But what I want to address is when people or when someone thinks that I'm speaking of my own accord, I wouldn't do that, right? And my prayer to God is, God, bridle my tongue that I don't ever go beyond the bounds of what you said, that I never go beyond the boundaries of what you told me to preach. I never go beyond the boundaries of what you told me to prophesy. Speak from me, God. Before I get on here, I'm like, God, decrease my flesh. Increase and fill me with your Holy Spirit that I don't sin against you, that I don't say anything that you didn't tell me to say. And I don't reveal in Scripture or give revelation anything that you didn't give me because I want to honor you in the gifts that you blessed me with and in the words that you placed in my mouth. And so, therefore, I disagree with that person thinking that I think I'm the grantor of God's wishes. That's a genie, right? I'm not a witch, right? I'm not a um, soothsayer, a tarot card reader. Like those people feel like they can do things like that. I don't. I represent the Lord God, right? That sits on high and looks low. And I'm not saying anything he didn't say, say. Glory to God. Because I got to meet him one day. 
And the last thing I want to hear when I get up there is Garlinda, depart from me. I never knew you. I'm not trying to hear that, right? So I'm only going to share with you encouragement, love, motivation, the word of the Lord. And God said in his word, it is written, I correct those whom I love. And so if the Lord says, tell the people to repent because I have things for them. Repent for the kingdom is at hand. That's in the word. And when that's what we're going to start the word off with on today. I was going to share one more thing. Okay, so how did I start being able to know what was God and what wasn't my own thoughts and understand, okay, is God telling me to speak prophetically? How, well, how did I know, right? And so it, different instances would come. I don't even know why I'm sharing this today, but I'm going to go on with the Holy Spirit, right? different instances would come up where Marvin was licensed before me. So our um, youngest teenager is 14. So Marvin got licensed 14 years ago um, when she was born and I would be sitting in church and he, and I wasn't yet licensed, but I had, I had ministry gifts. I wasn't walking in the ministry gifts, but I wasn't yet licensed. And so I would be in church and I would hear the Lord say, this person wants to get saved or this person needs healing or there's a healing spirit in, this, in, the, in the service today. Someone wants to get saved today. Like all these different things that would come about. And sometimes I would go to Marvin and I'd say, honey, I feel like the Holy Spirit is saying this. Well, we trust one another, right? We've been together since, I mean, we've been together for 30 years. So I would be able to call him over and say, hey, you know, I feel like the Lord is saying this. And finally, he was like, well, you say it, right? And I was like, mm -mm, right, because I don't want to be wrong. So I'm like, well, you know, what if it's just me thing? Mm -mm. So and one Sunday, this man wanted to get saved. And there was such a quaking in my spirit. Like I really felt like my body was, I don't know if you can tell, but look at my hair, right? And I felt like it was a shaking, like if you don't get up. And, and tell the pastor that this man over here, somebody in here wants to be led to Christ because they were getting ready to close the service up, right? So I, I so, spoke to the pastor. The pastor had respect for me because I was Marvin's wife. And I said, you know, do you mind, can I say something, you know, right quick? And he said, um, yeah. So he, um, I said, there's someone in here. I might have said it was the guy. I said, I feel like wants to receive Christ as their Lord and Savior on today. And he's popped up just like that and he had been sitting across the aisle from me right so there were several I'm gonna try not to cry but there were several instances where that happened and I felt responsible right because the Lord said we're to go out and make disciples of men but greater than all things God said I want you to go out and make disciples of men I want you to um, take care of the fatherless the widow and the poor, those things please God and he said and he who wins souls is wise so anything else is icing on the cake, right? But those are the things, the great commission that God wants us to do. Go out and make disciples of men, lead them to Christ, tell them about the good news of Jesus. So I ain't stutting nobody talking about you ain't the grantor of God's wishes. I'm, I'm not. My job is to lead disciples to Christ. My job is to win souls for Christ. And I'm going to do an excellent job at it as long as I have breath in my lungs. Glory to God, because that is the assignment. That's your assignment. If you are a believer in Christ. And so the other thing is that God told me to begin getting up. This was a few years back, probably like four or five years back. And I may have shared this before. Then we're going to get into the word, right? You can skip past this because, of course, you're listening to it. It's recorded. You can skip past. And the Lord said, begin getting up at like 4 o'clock, 3.30, 4 o'clock, something like that. He said, and I'm going to speak to you. So I felt I missed the first day when the Lord said, get up ahead and repent. Felt so bad I overslept, right? So because I'm not a morning person, right? I can get up in the morning and I even get up now around 4.30, 4, 4.30 because I'm studying for a specific real estate class. But it is tough. It's like peeling myself off the bed because I know I got to be up the rest of the day. It's not like I always get to go lay back down. So it's tough. So I got up and I got up with pen and paper in hand, right? Just like I had this notebook in hand. I had a pen in my hand. I sat at the dining room table and I was like, okay, I feel a little silly, right? I have to be honest. The Lord knew. I was like, I feel just a little silly took the top off the pen and the Lord said to me I heard him clearly say if you get up every morning I will speak to you and you will be my scribe I was like what okay ah yeah God what's a scribe right but I knew it was someone that the Lord would speak to to write down the word of the Lord and write down what he was saying and God began to speak to me every morning he would share with me every morning i still do it sometimes i miss days i feel so guilty and i'm like lord i'm so sorry when there's blank days in my book of the word of the lord to me on that day i feel so guilty right 
but I've been doing that now for at least three to four years. And the Lord told me, so on the day that I didn't have to do it anymore, meaning I didn't have to get up at 3 4 o'clock anymore in the morning anymore, I had a, um, I had clarity on if I knew it was God's voice or not. I had clarity on here, not, I don't want to say if, I had clarity on knowing that I was truly hearing from God because God trained my ear to hear his voice. He trained my ear to write down the, thus say it, the word of the Lord. He trained my ear prophetically, right? My spiritual ear and my natural ear to just sit and listen. Glory to God. So for those of you that are trying to figure out, okay, how can I hear from the Lord? How do I know what the Lord wants me to do? How do I know what the instructions are? And strategically, he said, get up between three and six, right? Because after six, it was almost like I couldn't hear as clearly as I wanted to. I'm going to teach about that on another day, but it's called the watch hour, right? I'm not even going to go into detail about it, but the Lord had me waking up during the watch hour. Um, and it's the hour that the watchman would be on the wall looking out for the enemy, right? And so that's all I'm going to say about it. But the Lord trained me to hear his voice. And so therefore, I don't speak of Garlinda's commands. I don't speak of Garlinda as a gift giver. I speak only what thus saith the Lord. Glory to God. So I think we've cleared that up. Amen. And so the Lord wanted me to share with you on today revelations of these incredible things that he is doing for us, the people of God, the church of God, for Zion, his children in the earth realm. And I want... He wants me to show you in the natural the things that he is doing in the spirit realm that are manifesting in the natural realm for you and I. So remember on on May 4th, I shared with you, it says, repent for the, this was the word of the Lord that I shared with you. I'm just going to read it right quick and go back and share a couple of scriptures in the word where the Lord says, repent. Right, because God blesses righteous hands. God wants to bless those that are clean. God wants to, matter of fact, I'm going to pull it up for you right quick. And y'all bear with me. Okay, Psalm eighteen nineteen. But let's just do Psalm eighteen without let me go to Psalm eighteen, because I don't want just that verse of scripture. And the reason I'm going to Psalm 18 is because this scripture got me through so many tough times, right? And it's a blessing, right? And many of you probably know it, but the title of Psalm 18 is the Lord is my rock and my fortress. And I just want to share with you why the Lord said repent, right? And so that I can bless you. So I love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised and I'm saved from my enemies. The cords of death encompassed me. The torrents of destruction assailed me. The cords of shield entangled me. The snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord. To my God, I cried for help. From his temple, he heard my voice and my cry to him reached his ears. See, sometimes we think the Lord doesn't hear us. Sometimes This is not what I plan to teach, but hey, we're going to go with the Holy Spirit. The Lord, We think that the Lord doesn't hear us because he doesn't answer in our natural time. He doesn't answer when we think that he should answer. He doesn't show up when we think he should show up. But the Lord said, he, it says in here, from his temple, he heard my voice and my cry to him reached his ears. God always hears us. God's ear is never deaf to us. Glory to God. It doesn't mean that he comes and answers when we think that he should because it's in his time. Glory to God. Then the earth reeled and rocked. The foundations also of the mountains trembled and quaked because he was angry. Smoke went up from his nostrils and devouring fire from his mouth. Glowing coals flamed forth from him. He bowed the heavens and came down. Thick darkness was under his feet. He rode on a cherub and flew. He came swiftly on the wings of the wind. God is always at our side. He's just not always at our command. Glory to God. We, we, we do get to ask God of things. And God said, ask, seek, and find. Asking you shall receive. But God's plans are greater than our plans. He said, "Our thoughts, your thoughts are not my thoughts. Your ways are not my ways. Right? He's higher than us. He said, it bowed the he, he bowed the heavens and came down. Thick darkness was under his feet. We're in Psalms 18 and 11. I'm sorry, 10. He rode on a cherub and flew. He came swiftly to, on the wings of the wind. He made darkness his covering, his canopy around him. Thick clouds dark with water. Out of the brightness before him, hailstones and coals of fire broke through his clouds. 
The Lord also thundered in the heavens and the Most High uttered his voice, hailstones and coals of fire, and he sent out his arrows and scattered them. He flashed forth lightnings and routed them. Then the channels of the sea were seen and the foundations of the world were laid bare at your rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of your nostrils. The Lord is upset when you are upset. He is upset when we are upset. When he hears our cries, he is angry. Glory to God. He's angry at the enemy and he comes on our behalf because he is our fortress. And so when we run into him, he said, the righteous run into me and are saved. Glory to God. And that we, that we are safe because we can hide under the shadow of the Almighty. In Psalm 18 and 16, it says, he took, I'm sorry, he sent from on high. He took me. He drew me out of many waters. I'm going to try not to cry. Have you ever found yourself surrounded? Glory to God. Darkness, despair, depression, you know, just trying to figure out life, you know, just in need and just like God, just hurting, whatever it was. It said he sent from on high, meaning he came down. Glory to God. And he took me. He took you and he drew us out of many waters. He drew us out of things that were overwhelming us that were the torrents that were overtaking us glory to god it says he rescued me from my strong enemy and from those who hated me for they were too mighty for me so we are no um match for the enemy that's why when people pick fights with satan and pick fights with the enemy on their own accord and on their own behalf they're no match for him that's why he beats them upside the head right because our strength is in the lord our strength is in worship and praise and in prayer glory to god on our knees is where the battle is fought and prayer is where the battle is fought because we deal with heavenly enemies um, and, and, and enemies in the heights, not enemies down below where we are. They're up there. Glory to God. It says they confronted me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my support. He brought me out into a broad place, a spacious place. He rescued me because he delighted in me. Glory to God. The Lord dealt with me according to my righteousness. So he might not have come for dirty hands. So when, when I said on the fourth, when the Lord said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, here it says the Lord dealt with me according to my righteousness. He came and rescued him because he found him righteous. Glory to God. According to the cleanliness of my hands, he rewarded me. God is not rewarding dirty hands. Glory to God. And so that's why we have to repent in order to receive the things of God. Because God said, I have all this over here that I've set aside for you. And all these things that I want to bless you with. But you got to have clean hands. I'm not blessing this. Glory to God. He says, for I have kept the ways of the Lord. And I have not wickedly departed from my God. For all his rules were before me. And his statutes I did not put away from me. Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14 says, all these blessings are yours on today. And will come upon you if you hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God in De Deuteronomy 28 15 it says this is the curse that will come upon those that do not follow and hearken after my voice glory to God this is not rocket science so when someone says you're not the grand of God wishes I'm not I'm just a servant a filthy rag glory to God as described in the word of God I'm a servant to the most high God and these are his words glory to God it says in Deuteronomy 32 46 and he said unto them set your hearts unto all the words which I testify among you this day which ye shall command your children to observe to do all the words of this law and then it says in 1 Samuel 12 15 but if you will not obey the voice of the Lord but rebel against the commandment of the Lord then shall the hand of the Lord be against you as it was against your fathers. Glory to God. So God is saying we got to repent and we have to have clean hands, righteous hands to receive the things of God. So every day, just say, God, you know, I repent. God, I ask you to forgive me for my sins in thought, word, and deed. That covers it all. And then turn from the things that are trying to hold you down. Glory to God. So Psalm 18. 21 for I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from my God for all his rules were before me and his statutes I did not put away from me I was blameless before him and I kept myself from my guilt so the Lord has rewarded me according to my righteousness he said it twice according to the cleanness of my hands in his sight he said it twice with the merciful you show yourself merciful with the blameless man you show yourself blameless with the purified, you show yourself pure. And with the crooked, you make yourself seem torturous. For you save a humble people, but the haughty eyes you bring down. For it is you, it is you who light my lamp. The Lord my God lightens my darkness. For by you, I can run against the troop. And by my God, I can leap over a wall. The, this God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord proves true. Glory to God. He is a shield for all those who take refuge in him. And so we're going to stop right there. Let me see if I want to stop right there.
I don't know. It's so yummy. I think it's just going to keep reading it, okay? So Psalm 1831, for who is God but the Lord and who is a rock except our God, the God who equipped me with strength and made my way blameless. He made my feet like the feet of a deer and set me secure on the heights. Glory to God. Because there is a type of deer that has hind feet and they can crawl and walk upon a mountain going up like this, right? Make sure you can see me because I don't have the camera where I can see it, right? And so the deer, they so this is the mountain and the deer can go up just like that, right? Because they have hinds feet. Oh my God, you got to go read about deer and hinds feet. Glory to God. So he says in Psalm 18 and 34, he trains my hands for war so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. God will teach us how to do battle with the enemy. Glory to God. It's through prayer, praise, and worship. Hallelujah is through speaking in tongues in our heavenly language because the enemy cannot understand when you speak in tongues. That's another, I don't even know that the Lord will ever have me teach that, but that's where your, your power is. Glory to God in, in all those things. You have given me the shield of your salvation. Let me go back and say that I'm not saying that you don't have power if you don't have the Holy Spirit because he said, I hear those that call upon me, I hear my children's voices. So I'm not saying that he doesn't hear anybody that can't speak in tongues, okay? You have given me the shield of your salvation and your right hand supported me. And your gentleness made me great. You gave me a you gave a wide place for my steps under me and my feet did not slip. I pursued my enemies and overtook them and did not turn back till they were consumed. So God will give us strength and courage to pursue the enemy. He will tell us a strategy to defeat the enemy. Glory to God. He will go on our behalf. He said that in Psalm 18, 38, I thrust them through so that they were not able to rise. They fell under my feet. That is the place of your enemies. He said, I've given you the ability to tread on the heads of serpents and to cast out devils in my name. And I've given you authority over every unclean spirit. These are the inheritance of the children of God. We are are not defeated that's why god says in all things you are more than conquerors you are more than able glory to god he said so in psalm 18 39 y'all i'm excited for you equip me with strength for the battle you made those who rise against me sink under me you made my enemies turn their backs to me and those who hated me i destroyed they cried for help but there was none to save they cried to the Lord, but he did not answer them. The Lord is not answering the enemy against you. Glory to God. I beat them fine as dust before the wind. I cast them out like the mire of the streets. You delivered me from strife with the people. You made me the head of nations. Glory to God. People whom I had not known served me. That's what I'm saying. God is saying that I'm going to bless you with some things and in some places that you may not even feel like you're qualified for, but it's not about our qualification. It's about the grace and the mercy of the Lord God because he found you to be righteous. Glory to God. He said in Psalm 18 and 43, you delivered me from strife with from strife with the people. You made me head of the nations. People whom I had not known served me. As soon as they heard of me, they obeyed me. Foreigners came cringing to me. Foreigners lost heart and came trembling out of their fortresses. The Lord lives and blessed be my rock and exalted be the God of my salvation. The God who gave me vengeance and subdued peoples under me. Who rescued me from my enemies. Yes, you exalted me above those who rose against me. You delivered me from the man of violence. For this I will praise you, O Lord, among the nations and sing to your name. Great salvation he brings to his king and shows steadfast love to his anointed, to David and his offspring forever. And we are David's offspring. Glory to God. So I wanted to share, I, don't, I just feel like the Lord led me to share Psalm 18. So there you go. And it leads into what I was sharing with you. And so on May 4th, it says, repent for the kingdom of heaven and therefore the kingdom of God are at hand. And this is the message that you must share. And then I'm going to just share with you the short verse of scripture in Exodus. It's going to be 23. It's yummy. Oh my God. Right? So repent for the kingdom of heaven. And therefore the kingdom of God are at hand. And this is the message that you must share for it is the message of salvation. And for it is the message of repentance says and saith the Lord thy God for thy kingdom comes and my gifts and my rewards for they are with me to distribute justly as I the Lord thy God has spoken unto thee and through my words for they will be rewarded for this is a time of open reward, open blessings, open giving for I am giving gifts unto men and women who are the sons and who are the daughters of God, who I, the Lord, their God, and the Lord thy God finds just. Says and saith the Lord thy God, for the bread of idleness is beneath me. God is saying, you got, I got to find you working, right? So while we're waiting on the Lord, we can't just be sitting idly by saying, doo, 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 I'm waiting on the Lord. No, go do what thus saith the Lord, and you're going to be blessed while you're out doing, even if you're only doing it with a little. 
right? Even if you feel like you're doing it without, God said, move on. I got you. I'm coming, right? There's a song, ride on King Jesus. I can't sing, so we're not, but that thing, I'm like, oh yes, come on, Lord, right? So he said, I'm coming. He said, the bread of idleness is beneath me. We got to get up and do what thus saith the Lord. We got to go out and do what God has called us to do. God has got to find us working in the vineyard of the Lord with the people of God and, and going after the gifts that God has blessed us with. And it's not about just finances and monetary gifts. It's about obedience. Glory to God, because he said, obedience is greater than sacrifice. He said, I'm doing, he said, this is the open reward, open blessings, open giving. Glory to God. I'm giving gifts unto men and women who are the sons and who are the daughters of God, who I, the Lord thy God, their God, and the Lord thy God finds just, says and saith the Lord thy God, the bread of idleness is beneath me, and for the bread of idleness is beneath the purposes of the Lord thy God, for which I, the Lord thy God, have so graciously created thee all for. So God expects us to do something with the gifts that he's ordained us with and blessed us with. He said, for my purposes and for my good pleasures, says and saith the Lord thy God in Jesus Christ holy and in Jesus Christ mighty and in Jesus matchly, matchless name we pray amen holy 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 is the Lamb of God who was slain for our sins glory to God and hallelujah and God says forgive 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 for tell my people that if they repent unto me and turn their eyes and their faces towards heaven then will I seek my father God's face on their behalf and I will restore to them all that was lost and all that was stolen and all that was stored up by the enemy that actually belonged to the children of God that I allowed your enemy to raid from and take from you and I will command for and I the Lord thy God will call forth all if, for all of its release for your God's sake for I desire to pour out blessings upon thee and unto thee and unto thee and um and upon thee says and saith the Lord thy God and Jesus holy and mighty and matchless name we pray amen so that was just a reminder of the Lord said repent so that he can bless us glory to God I'm sorry I just have to message my husband so I found out that my husband has poison oak and so he and Lord y'all we've been kissing on him <laughs> right just kissing his face and we hope you feel better and so I just um want to text him back to tell him I knew he had something on my goodness because he have, we've been side note we've been working on this house I've been telling y'all we um we have a construction side to our company and he had gone to cut grass at this house and the house had not had the grass cut since Jesus was a baby and I don't and he didn't have I think he might have had on a short sleeve shirt and the grass and stuff was flying all over the place and I told him you got to cover up when you go cut grass in a place that looks like it hadn't been cut in a long time and so he got um poison oak or poison ivy so they just gave him a steroid shot so y'all steroid shot so pray for my honey bunny so i'm glad it helped so i'm just telling him i'm glad you found out what it was because we were saying it was either it was it had to be some type of poison oak or poison ivy because it spread everywhere in his scalp in his face god bless him my sweet baby lamb okay so ooh, ooh, so y'all sunday i think no it was saturday so i don't know i think it was saturday right the lord um i had i get texts you know are you on like a text um group text or something like that this i used to have a mobile i was a mobile home dealer or had a mobile home dealer's license years ago right because we um had flipped a mobile home and i was like i think i want to do that full time but it's just frowned upon in our city and they make it too difficult so we didn't keep up with it but the lady had, that had blessed us to help us get our license through the state she um put me on this asked me because she put me on a text to receive scriptures every day and i was like yeah so she said she shared this scripture the other day and i was like the holy spirit just said i want you to uh, read that i want you to go read that oh my god it was so good so i'm gonna read it to you i'm gonna share it with you because i was like god this is revelation and it's confirmation of what i just shared with you but it's Exodus 23, 23 and 20. It's, and the, the title of this section of my of scripture says, God's angel to prepare the way. It says, see, I'm sending an angel ahead of you to guard you along the way and to bring you to the place I have prepared. Glory to God. So God is sending, he's sending people right because people represent god in the earth realm and so we can't reject things that seem strange we can't reject people that out of the ordinary that we don't even know like i've met friends here on youtube i've made friends on social media um 
excuse me, I've had people reach out to me from YouTube to ask me from, for prayer and we become friends. And so social media is a way for God to, it shrunk the world, right? And it became a way, and I'm not talking about some of the weird things that take place on social media, but some of the blessed things that take place on social media. And so we can't think it's strange. God told me to have an expectation. He said, Garlinda, when you pray to me and you ask me for things, expect it. Don't act like it's a shock and awe when it happens. Like, didn't you pray for it? Like, that doesn't even make sense. And so I'm not saying God was annoyed, but he said, I don't understand why you are, are you why you are um, surprised when something happens when you should have an expectation. And so God is going to be blessing us in like the craziest and most miraculous ways. And why he has to find us working is because he's going to bless you through the thing he told you to do. And you might have been doing that thing for years and sell no fruit. You might have been doing that thing for years and then your labor, you're like, but it didn't prosper. Like I did that, God. And I remember God saying, "I'm girl, and I'm taking you back. Yeah, I'm seriously trying not to cry. I'm taking you back. And when he said, I'm taking you back, he said, I'm taking you back because I took you out and I let you go on this sojourn because I had to test some things. I had to get some things out of you. Glory to God. And for seven years, I felt like I was in this dry land and this dry place as it related to business, as it related to not ministry, because I felt like I got stronger spiritually and stronger in ministry. I felt like I got stronger naturally, but it was an extremely dry place as it related to business and finances. And I was like, oh, this is a horrible place to be in, right? At least that's how I felt initially. But God wanted to test and see, will you love money more and the lack of it, and but still keep working? Will you love money more and the lack of it and not praise me? Will you love money more and the lack of it and not focus on the things I've called you to do? And so although I felt like in that time it was really dark and I was hurting in that time, in my heart and just like well God do you hear me are you there that the Lord was testing me and he was working those things out of me that were not of him I praise God for that time glory to God because now I can look back on it now that um you know God is prospering us I can say whew I'm so glad one I made it through that but thank God two that I didn't quit and and God is telling me to tell you don't quit he said go ahead and start the business go ahead and start the dream go ahead and move forward in that thing that I've called you to do go ahead and design the clothes go ahead and design the jewelry go ahead and write the books go ahead and start the business go ahead and speak and be a motivational speaker go ahead and get confirmed go ahead and get licensed go ahead and get ordained go ahead and get the job go ahead and go back to school go he said I'm taking you back and the things that, that didn't seem prosperous before, I'm going to prosper you in now. Think about it. I shared in the Word of God how that happened to Abraham, right? Abram at the time before his name was changed. But when Abram left his home and left his father's house to go out into a land that he didn't know, that the Lord said, I'm going to show you and I'm going to give as an inheritance to your children. And number one, he didn't even have children at the time when he went. That took faith. Glory to God. Number two, he didn't know where he was going. That took faith. Number three, he went down towards the land that the God was going to give him, he passed through the land that God was giving him and went into a place where there was a severe famine and he lived out in tents. Glory to God, not that they had stone buildings back then, but he lived out in a place of tents and then he had an arguing fuss with servants and family. And then when he separated from those things, God said, turn around and look. And he looked back in the Hebron Valley and everything that the Lord had allowed him to go through and to possess and to own, he had already been through glory to God but now God said I'm taking you into it glory to God and so it says see I'm so Exodus 23 and 20 see I'm sending an angel ahead of you to guard you along the way and to bring you to the place I have prepared so you're not going by yourself and angels oh my God like the Lord has blessed me only a couple times to see them in visions and when I say a force to be reckoned with but you can read in the word of God that they're forced to tend that you don't go on the tend with them right so we're not even alone on the journey we're not even going alone in the place that God has called us to and in the place where God is blessing us we're not even going by ourselves glory to God and it says pay attention to him and listen to what he says that's verse 21 Exodus 23 21b do not rebel against him. He will not forgive your rebellion since my name is in him. Glory to God. He will not forgive your rebellion. See, angels only go on assignment per God, per the Lord. 
Angel, I want you to go, go do this. Angel, I want you to go do that. They're not asking questions. They're not stopping until they've achieved that which God said do. And they are not trying to be rebelled against. Glory to God because they are ministering angels on an assignment. What if we act like angels and be like, hey, get out of the way. Hey, I'm on a mission. Get out of the way. I ain't got time to stop and talk to you. I ain't got time to stop and argue with you. I ain't got time to stop and go back and forth and shoot the breeze with you. I'm on a mission for the Lord thy God. Amen. Is he said, do not rebel against him. So when the Lord gives you a sign and when the Lord gives you a vision and when the Lord gives you a dream, don't rebel against it by saying, well, Lord, make the dew over there. Lord, put the paint over there. God, make it wet over there. Make it dry over here. I, I'm saying paint. That's not in the Bible. I'm just joking, right? But don't be fleecing God and fleecing the angel trying to figure out, is it the Lord? You know, you've been waiting on the Lord to show up, right? <laughs> I'm not fussing, but I'm just saying, don't do it, right? Because he said, the angel is not going to forgive your rebellion since my name is in him and name is capitalized the n is right because the angel is on a mission from god he's not going to forgive it follow him do what he says do in exodus 23 and 22 if you listen carefully to what he says and do all that i say i will be an enemy to your enemies and will oppose those who oppose you that's why we ain't gotta argue with people Right, I don't waste my time arguing with anybody. I say what I mean. I mean what I say. I'm one of the funnest people to be around. Most fun, I'm sure, is the appropriate word to say that. Right, I'm very fun to be around. But when I say something, I mean it. I, I try not to say things I don't mean because I know you can't take them back. But I'm about my father's business, and I don't waste time with nonsense. Right, and that is how God wants us to be. He said He wants us to be as shrewd as serpents and as peaceful as does. I'm a woman of peace. Right. Now, that doesn't mean that I won't say something or I won't get somebody told without um, without sinning, right? He said, be angry, but sin not. And so we don't have to be dust rugs and dust covers just because we're Christians and just because we're children of the Most High God. Amen. We don't have to let people take advantage of us. But God said, I will, he said, I will be an enemy to your enemies. We don't have to fuss and fight with anybody. He said, and will oppose those who oppose you. So when people come up against you, they're coming up against God. So I tell people all the time, you're not coming up against me, right? Because I, he fights my battles. I don't have to fight. Vengeance belongs to God. Amen? And so you don't have to argue with people. Keep on in your way. Glory to God. Keep on doing what thus saith the Lord. Keep on going after the things God said go after. Keep encouraging. Keep being great. Keep being successful. Because God said, I want to bless you openly. Glory to God. I have an open reward. He said, open blessings and open giving, says the Lord thy God. You ain't got time to be held up with nonsense. Amen? In Exodus 23 and 23, my angel will go ahead of you and bring you into the land of the Amorites, Hittites, Perizzites, Canaanites, Hevites, and Jebusites, and I will wipe them out. Good God Almighty. When I tell you I wanted to do cheetah flips when I read it, in other words, God said, I'm going to wipe out all your enemies. Glory to God. I'm wiping out every hindrance. I'm wiping out anything that exalts itself above the name of Jesus. I'm wiping out anybody that's in the way of me blessing you. Glory to God. I'm wiping out everything ahead of your path. I'm sending an angel ahead. Glory to God. So the way is being cleared. You just got to walk. Hallelujah. Hello. You just got to walk. He said, I got you. Just go do what I said. Do that angel is already going ahead of you. Don't tend with him because he's not trying to hear it. He said, he's not going to forgive it. He said, I won't forgive your rebellion because my name is in him. Glory to God. He said, and I will be an enemy to your enemies. I will oppose those who oppose you. I'm sending an angel ahead of you and I'm clearing the way for all the enemies. Right? Because these were the natural enemies of the Israelites, right? These were the people that already possessed the land that God promised them. So see, it don't matter if you look at that land, that place that God said, I'm going to bless you in, and somebody's there. It doesn't matter. Because when God is ready to scoot them on out the way, push them on out the way, move them on out the way, matter of fact, and here he said, I'm going to wipe them out. Glory to God. So when God said, I'm going to wipe them out, why are you worried about it? Just walk. Get your bag, your purse, and walk on, Okay. So, I got carried away. Do not bow down before their gods or worship them or follow their practices. Don't get entangled in their yokes. That's why I separated from people. Glory to God, I separated from people, places, and things that would try to hinder my walk. I can handle my own walk. I don't need any help. Glory to God. So, you've got to start to separate from some people, some friends, some family, some places, some things. Whatever you need to do, you know who and what it is. Things you might normally or ordinarily have done in the past or anything that you know is a hindrance to you. Music that might be a hindrance to you. TV shows that might be a hindrance to you. Because those are access portals for the enemy, right? The enemy is um, was the minister of the... Satan was the minister of music. 
So he knows how to control the sound waves and he knows how to control the narrative of what comes out of TV and the radio. I don't even listen to the radio in the car. It's so, it's ridiculous. We don't even have cable. We watch Netflix, right? So I monitor and control the sound waves of my environment. Glory to God. And so we have authority over those things. So it says, do not, so don't entertain foolishness and nonsense and the enemy's people. Glory to God. And you know who they are. You know what they are. And even if you try to say, well, God, I don't know. You know if you got that friend you don't need to be with. You know just because you've known somebody for years doesn't mean you still need to be hanging around them. Especially if you're grown and they're not growing. Disassociate. You don't have to say, hey, I'm not going to associate with you anymore because you're not growing. You can just peacefully and gracefully move away and cease communication. Right? It doesn't have to be... Um, obstinate or argumentative because you don't want to disrespect people you just let it gradually go away right and so in psalms 23 and 25 no 24 do not bow down before their gods or worship them or follow their practices you must demolish them and break their sacred stones to pieces Worship the Lord your God and his blessing will be on your food and water amen those are the instructions they're so simple and sometimes we make simple instructions hard to follow. It says, Worship the Lord your God and his blessing will be on your food and water. I will take away sickness from among you. Glory to God. None of you will, none and none will miscarry or be barren in your land. I will give you a full lifespan. Oh God. Hmm. God is so good. I will take sickness from among you. No one will be barren. And the times that I feel like um, the Lord has blessed me to, to minister, even before I was ordained, the Lord blessed me to pray with people that were barren and just, and just to see the fruit of their womb and to see them become moms. And some of them multiple time moms, not because of me and not because of my prayer, but because of the faithfulness of God. Glory to God. And just to see people hungry and then see them full with food and for the Lord to use you you know the things that you've done for people and the, and the way that you've blessed people and the way you've prayed for people see sometimes you'll pray with people and you won't get to see the manifestation of the prayer or the manifestation of the blessing because maybe they were a stranger or maybe time distanced you right but that doesn't mean we don't pray that doesn't mean we don't do the things of God but God is saying there will be no sickness among you. He said, I'll be a blessing on your food and water, meaning it won't run out. You're going to eat well. You're going to drink well. Glory to God. And God said, I'll take away sickness from you. And none will miscarry or be barren in your land. I will give you a full lifespan. So stop thinking that you're too old now to complete the things of God. Stop thinking you're too old now to carry out the things of God. Because even his plans will not miscarry. Glory to God. That doesn't say it in the word. I'm saying that he said, I'll give you a full Lifespan. I'm not adding anything to the word. I'm saying, the Lord said, my word will not return to me void to accomplish that which I set it out to do, whether you eight or 80. That's what he said. He said, my word will not return to me void. So whatever word was spoken over you in the beginning, because the word says in the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word was God and wisdom was there with him, right? And so whatever it is that God spoke, he said, it's going to accomplish that which I set it out to do. It don't matter if you 80 or 800, but I'm going to give you a full lifespan. Glory to God. Those are our promises. If we would repent, turn from our wicked ways, put our eyes and our face towards heaven, toward heaven and seek the Lord. These are the blessings that the Lord has promised us. Amen. And then in Exodus 20. 327 and this is where it got even greater this was part of the revelation i will send my terror ahead of you and throw into confusion every nation you encounter i will make your enemies turn their backs and run i will send a hornet this is what almost threw my bible not on the floor but just across the room not, not even across the room i'm joking i will send the hornet ahead of you to drive the hevites canaanites and hittites out of your way I'm going to stop right there and make myself a note. And we're going to, we'll end on 29. You know that the murder hornet just entered the United States, right? And so first the pandemic, not to kill, to turn people's eyes towards heaven. Glory to God. Because 
I'm not even going to go there, right? To turn people's eyes towards heaven, glory to God, to redeem the time of families, to redeem the time with God, to redeem the blessings of God. The Lord calls the government to stimulate the economy through a stimulus check for those. Some many got $2,000. Some people got $3,400. Some people got $2,400. God said, I'm going to bless the enemy. I'm not calling the government the enemy, but they're enemies within that realm, right? To bless the people of God. People were blessed through the stimulus. And now the Lord said, I'm sending out the hornets and I'm driving out your enemies in the spirit realm, right? Of course, the hornets are not going to be eating up everybody like the plagues were doing in Egypt. But the hornet is a symbol and a sign that God is saying, I'm moving the enemy out of your way. And I'm opening up and blessing some things for you because he said, an open reward open blessings and open giving the lord said i got this he said i'm driving out the enemy before you so i want you to begin to look at things spiritually and not naturally glory to god a murder hornet that has never been here and just all of a sudden shows up on the scene oh it's god glory to god exodus 23 27 i will send my terror ahead of you and throw into confusion every nation you encounter tell me that the pandemic has not been confusion they never dealt we've never dealt with a pandemic Glory to God. And so not on this scale to where all states are closed down. Schools are done for the rest of the year. Many businesses have not reopened. There's a reason for those things, but it's the reason for God to bless you. Glory to God. So stop watching the news. Oh, this many people died. Oh, this many people sick. But even greater numbers of that have survived. They just don't preach that to us. They just don't share that many other people have survived. Glory to God. Anyway, God said... I will make all your enemies turn their backs and run. This is your season. This is your time. Not even a season. Mm -mm. This is it. This is the time for the people of God. It's not a short-term season, not a long-term. It's not a season. I didn't mean to use I repent and I rebuke the word season. I cast it back into the outer abyss of hell, covered silk, blood of Jesus. I lose forth the time. Open reward. Open heaven. Open blessing, says the Lord thy God. Amen. And it says in Psalm, I'm sorry, Exodus 23, 28, I will send the hornet ahead of you to drive the Hevites, Canaanites, and Hittites out of your way. Prophetically, the Lord is saying, I'm moving your enemy out of the way. The hornet is a sign. Glory to God from heaven that I'm moving enemies out of your way. Go do what thus saith the Lord. Start from the ground up. Start running your businesses. Start, start, do whatever it is God said you, for you to do. Only you know. I'm just naming stuff because that's just the normal thing to do. You know what God said do. Glory to God. And then Exodus 23, 29. But I will not drive them out in a single year. So don't look for it to happen immediately. It's over time. Immediately it's beginning. But it won't all be done at once. So this is just an introduction to what God is doing. Good God Almighty. His blessings are beginning now. But there is no end. Because it says... But I will not drive them out in a single year because the land will become desolate and the wild animals too numerous for you. Little by little, I will drive them out before you until you have increased enough to take possession of the land. God said, I got to do it over time, right? He said, because the land will become desolate. So he said in Exodus 23, 29, but I will drive, but I will not drive them out in a single year. Because the land will become desolate and the wild animals too numerous for you. Little by little, I will drive them out before you until you have increased enough to take possession of the land. So God said, while you're increasing and while you're growing bigger and bigger and extending, expanding and growing day by day, I'm driving the enemy out. Glory to God. I'm chasing them out. I'm completely wiping them out before you. Glory to God. It says... I will drive them out before you until you have increased enough to take possession of the land. In Exodus 23, 31, I will establish your borders from the Red Sea to the Sea of the Philistines and from the desert to the river. I will hand over to you the people who live in the land and you will drive them out before you. God said, I'm making a way where you're going to drive them out. Glory to God. He says, do not make a covenant with them or their gods. Do not let them live in your land or they will cause you to sin against me because the worship of their gods will certainly be a snare to you. God said, drive out from before. I'm putting the people in your hand to drive out from away from you. Those that will cause you to stumble. Those that will cause you to turn away from me. Those that will cause you to look away from the promises of God and get caught up in worldly and earthly things that are not of me. He said, do not let them live in your land. Disassociate with things that are not of God. So we're going to end on that because it's been long enough. I've been talking for 48 minutes and that's all I got. And thus, glory to God. Amen. 
So, again, may the Lord be a blessing upon you, your barn, your storehouse. I'm only doing this because it's the will of God for me to do this. If you feel blessed by the word of the Lord and the Lord has laid it on your heart to sow into our ministry, you can sow via our cash app at dollar sign, capital G, 3554. I'm not asking you to sow. I'm not telling you to sow. I'm not asking you for money. The Lord had me to repent because I had never, in the past years that we've been ministering, I would not offer people the opportunity to sow. And so therefore, I don't offer them the opportunity to receive a harvest. And that was sent upon me, right? So that's the only reason I'm offering you that. I pray that this word has been a blessing to you because it is certainly a blessing to me. I'm humbled to share with you. So again, I'm Pastor Garlinda Price with Common Ground Ministry. Love my, myself some Marvin Price Jr., my honey bunny. If you have prayer requests, you can always send me a message here on in the comment section or you can text me at 910-494-7798. I'll put my number down below. Don't call me no nonsense now. <laughs> but if you want prayer, I'm talking about people that want to argue and create foolishness. But I will put my contact information below. I would love to pray for you. Um, whatever it is you feel like um, the Lord will have you to do or if you want to be led to Christ we can do that too okay so God bless you I pray you have an incredible Tuesday what's today Wednesday incredible Wednesday and as the Lord leads I will share again tomorrow the word of the Lord if I have something to share okay so God bless you I'll talk to you soon